Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Jen for those who are new here and I'm a software engineer based in Seattle, Washington. Today we are doing something very different and special which is my very first Q&A ever and I'm kind of nervous about it but we recently hit 25k on my YouTube channel so I figured I'd do a little Q&A for you guys to get to know me better. I went ahead and asked you guys to submit questions through my Instagram page but it didn't hit me until later that I should have asked on my YouTube community page as well. But I hope you guys forgive me because a lot of these questions are really good. I went through all of the submitted questions and I'll be answering the most commonly asked questions. And I also categorized it so that it kind of goes from more personal questions to career related questions. So let's go on with the first one, which is how old are you? I am 26 years old. I recently turned 26 in May. My birthday is May 27, so I am a Gemini. The next question is, what is your height? So I am 5'1 and 3 quarters, which I just say I'm 5'2 because rounding up is very important. And that equates to 158 centimeters, I believe. I'll fact check myself after I film this. Um, but yeah, a lot of people actually think and assume that I'd be taller. So that's not the case though. What is your MBTI? I am an INFJ. I've been an INFJ since the first time I've ever taken the test. The last time I took this test was back in July because one day some of my teammates and I were just very curious about our MBTI and even though I knew I was an INFJ, I retook it for them and we also took our Enneagram test that day and I am a type 1 personality based off of the Enneagram if anyone was curious. Were you born in Korea? The short answer is no. I was born in the United States and specifically in Anchorage, Alaska. My parents are both from Seoul, South Korea though and they immigrated here when they were in their early 20s. Um, so yeah, I was born here. What is my favorite food? I have a lot of favorite food, but my ultimate ones will have to be doenjang jjigae or kimchi jjigae. They're both Korean dishes and they're just like my all-time comfort food and I don't know, it's just so lovely and so delicious. I could have it every day if I didn't care about my health, but I do, so I don't have it every single day. <laughs> what countries have you visited? I've actually been to a lot of countries. I'll list them out here or somewhere on the screen. While I was in college, I had the opportunity to study abroad in Budapest, Hungary. So I spent six months studying abroad in Europe. And during that six months, I took every opportunity to um, travel on the weekends and the holidays. And it was just the most amazing six months of my life. Being able to travel without any responsibilities other than school, like it was one of the best moments of my life. I've been to only three Asian countries, which are Korea, Japan, and Philippines. I want to take more opportunity in my future to travel to more Asian countries though, and explore more of the culture over there. Any hobbies at the moment? So my hobbies revolve around my workouts and I'm a very big yogi. I've been doing yoga for the past four years of my life. I started practicing yoga when I was 22, right after I graduated college. And since then, I've just, you can't stop me. Like I'm obsessed with yoga, but my most recent hobby has been Legree, which is a form of Pilates and it's one of the best workouts I've ever done and I really love the intense 45 minutes that Legree gives you and I've been doing that since last winter so it's been like 10 months I would say it hasn't been a year yet but I've gone enough I've been to more than 50 classes probably close to 70 by now I usually work out and go to either yoga or Pilates like five times a week so that's where most of my time is spent when I'm not working or doing other things um, other than a workout based hobby I've been really enjoying reading this year I've kind of fallen back into the habit of reading and specifically I really love self-development books I know it's like not the most exciting genre but I don't know I find a lot of value from it so the next question is the most commonly asked one and even on my YouTube videos, I always get asked this which is, what is your relationship status? Are you single? Are you seeing anyone? Blah 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 and the answer is, 
I am single. I've been single for the past nine months and I'm in my single girl era. I have no interest in dating at the moment. I'm just dating myself and prioritizing myself. That's the most important thing to me right now. Like I genuinely don't have any interest in dating and I feel like I'll be single for quite a long time because I can't see myself getting into another relationship if it's really worth it though. Like this person has to check all of my boxes and I feel like it's gonna take a while for that person to appear. <laughs> The next question is my favorite question, which is, how is your cat? Honestly, if you know me and you know me in person, any chance I get, I will talk about my cat, Howell. Like, I'm obsessed with my cat, Howell. He is the love of my life. He's the joy of my life and he's just everything to me. Um, so I'm going to take this question and kind of elaborate on it. So he is doing very well. He is sleeping right now. He's doing his afternoon nap. So for some backstory, I adopted Howell back in December 2021. And I adopted him from Meow Cat Shelter in Kirkland, Washington. Before Howell, the only interaction of cats I had was cat sitting for my older cousin's two cats very briefly for like two days only. and. That's like the only experience I had with cats. I knew nothing about cats. I just knew that they, you know, purred and didn't listen. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was like the best decision I ever made. He truly is the biggest source of joy to my life every single day. And he just brings me a lot of happiness. The next question is related and it's, do you think you will ever adopt another cat in the near future? short answer yes i actually visited my cat shelter again recently like a couple months ago um but i don't know i just felt a little overwhelmed with the idea of adopting another cat i was also really afraid that the cats wouldn't like each other and just the whole process kind of overwhelmed me um but i do know that I think I want to adopt a kitten for Howell because Howell is actually a pretty small cat. He's very short. So compared to other average cats, he's a lot smaller. So I felt like if I adopted another adult cat and it's bigger than Howell, I felt like maybe Howell will feel a bit um, scared by it. I don't know. but. I just know I want to adopt a kitten, but not only for Howl, I kind of want to experience adopting a kitten and raising a kitten um, since Howl was an adult when I adopted him. Look who just woke up from his nap. Hi, Howl. Say hi. Hi. Oh, okay. Bye. Bye. How do you like Seattle? I do think Seattle is an amazing city. It has a very good balance between city life and nature. Like you're surrounded by the mountains and you have the sound and it's coastal. So um, you just get the benefit of the mountains and water. And it's a very beautiful city, especially in the summertime. But to be completely honest, Seattle feels like a very small city to me. In terms of working and living here, so like Seattle is a very big tech bubble there's not a lot of diversity here like most of the people you meet will work in tech and are most likely software engineers so i feel like i'm beginning to outgrow seattle and honestly i'm just the type of person that if i get too comfortable in a place and if it doesn't challenge me i will want to switch up my environment and so to follow up with that question do you plan on living in seattle forever and i think you could tell already i don't i never saw myself living here for the rest of my life. I did want to move to Seattle initially for my career because I thought it would be such a great place to start my early career as a software engineer and it really has been. If you could work in any other city other than Seattle, where would it be? If you were to ask me two years ago, my answer would have been the Bay Area because as an engineer, I really wanted to experience working in Silicon Valley, in the Bay Area. San Francisco is, is one of the biggest tech cities in the world, but my answer has shifted since then, since the pandemic essentially, and I would really love to work in New York City because I really love the energy that the city has. 
and outside of the US I would really love to experience working somewhere in Europe um, I'm not sure where I would really have to depend on the tech industry scene in the cities but I just know that I really love Berlin I thought Berlin was one of the most amazing cities I visited when I went to um, Europe and I felt like I could work there so I don't know we'll see what do you do to manage the loneliness while living alone this is a good question because I actually am one of those people that's alone but not lonely if you know what I mean like I never really feel lonely um, and I think it's because I typically just keep myself busy all the time I don't really have a moment to think that I'm lonely or I FaceTime with my sister who lives in Boston um, but I guess like there are moments when I don't really want to run errands alone I'll ask a friend if they want to go grocery shopping with me like go to the Korean market or go to Trader Joe's together or something so I think that's one way that helps combat the feeling of loneliness and feeling of doing things alone but typically I don't feel lonely I frankly thrive off of being alone so I haven't really faced major struggles with that how do you make friends in Seattle? I recently moved in but have no idea how. This is also an interesting question because I don't really actively try to make friends. I think my friendship that I have just came off very organically. Um, but I feel like living in Seattle because it's such a big tech community, I feel like for me personally, I made a lot of friends through my teammates and through the people that I've worked with and I know a lot of people may be like oh how do you how are you friends with the people that you work with but I don't know I think like for my situation all of us are nearly the same age so I've gotten close with a few of them um, it's not like I hang out with them all the time it's just you know on the weekdays I get that social interaction that I need through those work friends and then occasionally on the weekends I'll plan something with them so um, yeah I think that helps and I know like my sister who recently moved to Boston um, she finds friends through Facebook groups like there will be groups for women in their 20s who work in the cities and I know a lot of people meet friends through Bumble BFF as well so yeah, I hope that was helpful. I'm not really that helpful when it comes to making friends. <laughs> How do you balance your day-to-day -day lifestyle? Um, so, I don't know. I don't think there's really ever is a balance because you're always going to be sacrificing one thing or another. And in my case, I feel like I always sacrifice sleep and social life, but that's mainly because I don't really need a very big social life to feel fulfilled like I am introverted and I'm like super introverted um, so I don't really find myself wanting to go hang out with a group of friends I feel like a lot of people will relate to this but most of my day is dedicated to my 9 to 5 so I will sacrifice a little bit more sleep at the end of the day just to relax and do things for myself what is your career journey what is the background and how did you end up with software engineering so for this, I have a dedicated YouTube video where I talk about my software engineering journey. So I'll leave a link down below in the description box um, for you guys to go to because it's much more in-depth and it's a dedicated video so I got to explain in-depth. <laughs> What's it like being a woman engineer? Do you feel like you have to change your personality to adapt to the culture? So I really love this question because um, especially the second part like do you feel like you have to change your personality to adapt to the culture and the answer is no I am so unapologetically myself for example whenever I am writing a design document I prefer using a pastel color scheme for my diagrams just because I think they look prettier and it is a lot softer and the colors are more feminine if you would kind of pinpoint it and when i was writing my very first design doc i sent my design doc to a teammate who's also a woman and i asked her do you think this document is a little too girly and it won't be taken as seriously and the fact that i asked that is kind of sad because 
like why should I be worried about that? Like I shouldn't be worried about being too feminine or being too girly in the workplace because that is who I am. Although the industry is heavily male dominated, I feel like that's not a reason why you should shy away from being your truest self. Engineers can come in all different backgrounds and just because I'm a woman in the workplace doesn't mean I should change who I am for the mass majority. What is it like working with teams? Are people easygoing in the SWE environment? So I would say that it's very dependent on the team, I suppose, but from my experience alone, I think everyone is very easygoing from the people that I've had to work with. I think the biggest struggle for me was working with people who have different collaboration and communication style than me. Um, and granted, not everyone is going to be just like me, but I don't know, sometimes you just don't really mesh well with people like you don't vibe with them as well which would make it a little bit more difficult but overall i think people are pretty easygoing do you think quitting big tech and becoming your own boss so short answer yes i have thought of this i love my career right now but i do think like in the long term i would love to be my own boss whether it's having my own business or something. But at the same time, I do have the ambition to climb up the corporate ladder, um, mainly because especially in the tech industry, there's not a lot of women in leadership and I want to become a lead, like a woman in leadership like in the tech industry. I think that would be so cool and like I'd be able to inspire other women in tech to keep climbing the corporate ladder because I think it's important to have a diverse set of leaders. Um, I think that's an ambition of mine, but I also want to be my own boss. You know, we'll see where life takes me. Okay, and so for the last question, if money didn't matter, what would you be doing right now? So I really love this question and I appreciate it. So thank you for asking. I talk to my sister all the time, but if I wasn't in the STEM related field, I would love to be an artist. Growing up, I was very artistically inclined. You know, it's just one of those things that was never nurtured. I was never nurtured to harness my artistic skills. Instead, I was nurtured to um, be more analytical. So if I weren't in tech and if money didn't matter, I think I would want to pursue something related to arts and a way to be creative. And this is one of the reasons why I started YouTube is because I really wanted a creative outlet for myself. But yeah, I would be an artist of some kind. <laughs> Alright, so that is a wrap on my very first Q&A ever. I really hope you guys got to know a few new things about me. And let me know down below in the comments if there's anything we have in common. I think that'd be really cool to learn. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!